The man said he had me and gave me thirty-five dollars a week. And he wanted me to start. I was going on Thursday, Friday that day. I was talking to him. When we start next Monday. And he took me home. That thirty-five dollars loomed in my head. And I sat it, okay, in his call, I said, okay, I'll, 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 I'll go along with it, I'll take it, I'll take the job. First Negro on a white Southern daily paper, you know, okay, I take the job. I go back down there, the man said, I want you to write Negro news. Oh, you... Right, progressive Negro news, showing how Negroes are doing well in the in the Negro community. See, they had been publishing a paper, a page in the paper called there was a slip page. You take the page out when it goes to the white community. Happening is among colored people. Every what Wednesday they run that page, and the colored people, the Negroes knew that they were taking that page out. And they stopped taking the van and droves. So they're desperate to go hire a Negro for full staff member. That's what I thought they hired me for. They didn't make no much difference to them. But I went down there, man, he said, okay. He told me what he wanted me to do, but he didn't give me a desk in the city room, in the newsroom. The first five years I had to write my stuff at home, in the front room at home. I couldn't type. I didn't own a typewriter. I had a ch another church member, Mrs. Drake, who taught me English at Pearl High, lived on the street over. She had a typewriter. She let me have her typewriter, long as me her typewriter. I would get up in the morning at 3 o'clock and print it out my news, which I had going out all over the city the first, that previous day, day and gathered, walking mostly, you know, and printed, and my sister would type it for me. After a while, I decided I'm going to buy me a typewriter. I bought a typewriter, a new portable Tem Remington Rand typewriter, and it began picking my stuff out. I had to have it in the boss's hands by 8 o'clock every morning to meet the first edition which came out about what? 11 o'clock. They had three editions a day. First edition, which go out in the rural section, home edition in Nashville, and a blue, a red line edition late in the evening, which carried the numbers. You know what the number racket? Uh, so, the first five years, I wrote my stuff at home by getting up in the morning, three o'clock, early in the morning, see, three o'clock, then they had to have it in Moss's office by eight o'clock, had to walk from my home to the 1100 Broadway, give it to him, not the city editor, give it to him. And he would give it to sale, I guess, after he read it. That, that went on for five years. I was covering the Negro community. I covered the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts. I covered the YWCA, the YMCA. I covered Fisk. I covered Tennessee State. I covered the Baptist Bar Bar Seminary, Seminary. I covered churches, all churches, all denominations, black. You know, we're big on Sunday churches. So I worked every day of the week. 